Oh, a little side job today. My buddy, his brakes uh, said something about metal on metal, so we're going to go out there to his uh, thing, a 2011 F-250 Super Duty and get the rotors and pads changed out on it. Joy, joy. I brought my, like, 3-8 drive tools, my electric impact, my big uh, heavy-duty half-inch drive Mac with the 10 amp, amp hour battery. I brought my ratcheting expert line wrench kit. Um, I just brought some random tools that I know I would need for the job. So, we're going to get on it. Brought the Lincoln today. The good old Lincoln Town car, baby. Got a roll in style. I have to say, out of the Grand Marquis, the F-150s, the other Lincolns, I've never ridden in a car so comfortable. I mean, this thing rides better than a Cadillac. The old, the old saying, rides like a Cadillac, this rides better than a Cadillac. That's for sure. And the fact that it has, as of last night, let's look at this mileage here. Come on. Get it in the hole. 253,000 miles and she rocks like she's brand new. No ticks, no rattles, no scrapes, no grinding, no nothing. Just like brand new. And Roush exhaust system. Ooh. Anyhow, let's get off to our destination. Nice little scenic drive. In a quarter mile, turn right onto. We've got 2011 F-250 Super Duty here, and 6.2 liter. This one is paper thin. Maybe like 2:30 seconds left on the rim, and the one on the or on this tire, and on the other side, it's metal on metal. So here's where I'm at. Uh, we had to run back to the parts store. We had the wrong brakes and rotors, but um, I took the anchor, the anchor bolts out of the caliper bracket. These were 21 millimeter. See, these pads are gone. They're paper thin. And these were 16 millimeter, I believe. These were the actual caliper bolts. Um, would hit it. I went ahead and hit the old rotor a few times with a hammer to knock it off here and jar it loose. I got it to jar loose and slide right off. Cleaned the new one up with some brake clean, slid it back on. If you're looking for part numbers, part number for the rotors, these are CarQuest, I think they're called CarQuest Gold. Um, They are YH14530P. And then the brake pads with the hardware are the gold. They are GMKD1334. And these are like OE style. So now what I'm doing is I'm sitting here and I'm cleaning all the rust and stuff out of these pockets where the new where the clips and stuff are going to sit. So let's get those cleaned off and everything installed. So, grease where I cleaned off all the rust, where the clips go. Pull your slide pins out, clean up your slide pins, wipe them off real good, re-grease them, clean up all the rust around the lip where the seal right here likes to clip onto and sit, put them all back together. So now that we got the pads out, I take a little bit of grease and put it on the end of the pad, just right on the end, because that clip is going to sit right there on the end of it, and then I find the right clip, it has to face a specific way. So. You see all this indentation kind of half moons that way and you see this tab over here you don't want that one because that ain't gonna it's not gonna work or I should say you want the one that when you put it on like this it's the tang side is on the outside of the moon flip it over this way same thing over here I might have explained that other way the first time where I said that one was the wrong one. Uh, see how this is on the inside of the moon? It's not the right one. And the 
that's not the right one. That's not the right one. That is the right one, right there. And then basically, clean off any fingerprints you may have got on there. Let me clean those off real quick and I'll show you how to install them. One of the reasons why I greased the spot first is because these have to slide down in the slots. And then these have to sit like so. And you want to make sure you get these all to slide in right there. starting to go the clips just being a booger let me let me make sure I got that cleaned out good enough let's go down here should look something like this and then what I do when I'm done just for like a little bit of an anti just like a little anti squeak thing I'll put just a little dab of grease on the front and back And then like this, just the light, just real light, nothing too crazy. Let's put the caliper back on. So, it's all mounted up. Everything's put back together. I use a rag to wipe off any kind of residual rust that may be building up on the caliper and stuff before I slide it back in there. I'll show you how I collapse this caliper piston without using any kind of special tool, just a pry bar on the other side. Let me get this wheel put back on. Let's get switched over. All right, so here's what I wanted to show you on the other side. Let me get a jack stand under here real quick and not be a Scotty Comer. All right, so the the trick here on this setup, a lot of people think you need special tools. So I take my pry bar, and I'll catch the inside of that. Now watch what happens. See, it's moving slowly. And I'll pull out so far. Now you can see it's shifting a little bit. Go to the bottom here, same thing. Catch that pad. Pull in, make myself a little room. Then I'll shove the rotor back. And I'll insert my tool, if I can get the good good picture here, in front of the brake pad, which there's, there's no brake pad left, really. You can see right there is where the brake pad would be. And I'll just twist it a little, twist it, try to get myself some room to where it'll start going in, and then voila. Now I'm pushing that piston in. Let me see if I can get you a better view here. Push that piston in. Go to the bottom. Do the same thing. Pushing just a little bit. So I got that pulled in all the way now and that big old gap is open. I'm good to go. Slide this off here, clean everything up, knock that rotor and stuff off of there, and put everything back on. No special tools needed. Now you can hit these however you want. A lot of people will tap here on the back side. They'll tap here. 
These are already coming loose. I'm just going to give them a, just on the outside. Just to maybe knock a little rust off where the shoes would be. And then I'll tap them on the face. And then get behind it. There it is. Already coming loose. Finish the rest by hand. Wiggle it off there. one hand and then kind of get in here and get all this rust and stuff you knocked out <laughs> Wipe it all out, do whatever you can. Clean it all up real good. E brakes are still good. Now, when I brake clean these, I'll wipe all the contact surfaces off inside and out. I've already wiped, wiped the outside face off over here, all the way around. But I also clean inside here around the flange where it's going to meet the hub or the, the axle. And I also clean this because your parking brakes got to meet right here as well. And he's got a factory oil film around them. Some of them don't, some of them do. Some of them come with a painted surface and you don't need to do anything. You just use them normal. You don't even need to clean the paint off the painted surface ones. The new brakes will knock the paint off as you stop. And then you look like this. Then basically, come over to the vehicle. There's a lot of residual rust, but there's no like real heavy built up rust here. That's it. Got a nice light drag to them. That's all she wrote. Now put your calipers and everything back together and you're good to go. So here's another thing you can do too. You can preload your caliper with your pads before you even slide it on so you're not bending over and hunched over inside there trying to get all these to line up. Basically, this is exactly how they sit. As long as you can get them to move around inside their slot and move back and forth, like this is free, it's moving around. It's only going to have a little twist because it only has so much room to move right there. What ends up moving is the whole pin assembly and everything moves or the, the plate assembly up here and everything moves with it. And the spring loaded action right here is what helps return it on each end. So go ahead and install everything. This is what you want to look for when you're done. See it's got a little gap all the way down here. It's got a little gap here. It needs to be a little bit. That's how those pads return. See how they're moving back out? They're springing back out. That's that's how they're supposed to be. If you don't have that, you got to clean those areas where these clips go a little bit better and put everything back together. Maybe even use a file. Well, at this point, everything's clean, bolted back up, moving freely. And uh, we're ready to go ahead and put the tires and stuff on. And I'll see you when we get this thing on the road and we start burnishing these pads in. Or bedding the pads, burnishing the pads, whatever you will. First rule, before you even do anything, go ahead and pump that brake pedal up because you have low, yep, there it is right there, we're good. Then start your vehicle. Give it a couple more just to make sure you're nice and tight. Okay, you're tight. Now go ahead and go burnish your pads in. I'll show you how to do this real quick. You're just gonna go back and forth and stop a bunch of times. You're gonna do it over and over and over again, like 30 to zero, 30 to zero, 30 to zero, 30 to zero. And then you're gonna go like 50 down to 25, 30 kind of quick. 
and you'll notice as you're doing it your braking performance is getting better and give it a little break and breather in between to kind of cool off in between smashing on the brake pedal and then okay there was a good one I'm gonna do that one or two more times from 30 down and then I'm gonna go up to 50 down 45 50 somewhere in there ballpark I'll meet you back at the house when the burnishing or bedding in the pads is over. Burnishing in went well. The brakes are great. The customer is extremely happy with everything that was going on. And uh, there's $100 in my pocket. I don't typically tell my customers or friends or anybody what I want. They just pay me well. I never, almost never tell somebody what I want. And they always, because of my professionalism and the services that, are, that I provide and the guarantee with my work they just always take care of me i've never um i've never had to really ask for x amount of dollars they've always just been very very fair with their work and even if they're not i don't care i really don't care it's me helping somebody else out and other customers make up for the ones that that don't do too well um but you know, my buddy just now that I just left his house, it was kind of an emergency with these brakes. He always takes care of me. Never have to tell him nothing. It took me about an hour, hour and 10 minutes of taking my time, making the video, everything else, doing a nice, real, 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 real nice quality job. Just done, taken care of, 100 bucks. There you go, have a nice day. That's it. Y'all be blessed, take care. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a little bit different. It's one of my side jobs away from work. Um, every once in a while, I will do side work like this, but it's only in an emergency. Just because I don't want to cause conflict with the company I work for. But if it's family, friends, or really good customers that have been in a pinch that I've got to grow with and build a relationship with over time, the company does understand that sometimes these things come up. So it's not moonlighting. It's just it's me taking care of somebody that needs to be taken care of. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Be safe. I love you all. Be blessed.